Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking amnesia 1800 style. Because the more you look into the 1800s, the more you keep coming across lost technologies or lost oral traditions, things like this. So I just wanted to point some things out, show some repeating patterns, and touch on a few different sites. So let's get started by talking about Melbourne, Australia once again, because back in 2017, there was the discovery of the buried blocks phenomenon associated with Melbourne. And ever since 2017, they've been finding more and more of these buried blocks. And the story once again is that city council ordered the street levels to be raised approximately two meters. So a little over six feet, but everybody forgot about it until 2017. Well, another buried block was found in 2022, and I think it's Bennett's Lane, but there's a really interesting quote from the lead archeologist on the site. And he's talking about this site specifically, but he says, uh, from what we can tell, the raising of the streets, the filling occurred in 1855 for this particular site, we just collectively forgot about it. So people who should know, archeologists, historians, nobody remembers. So my speculation is that there was an event much further back in our past. I don't think any of this happened in the 1800s. But again, that's just my opinion. And before we leave Melbourne, I just wanted to point out this hotel which was demolished, I think, in 2013 or 14, called the Stork Hotel. And it's a two-story structure, but there's actually a cellar, which at one point was the original ground level. What's interesting about all that, which I'm going to get to, but before I do, I just want to mention the narrative says this hotel was erected in 1855, but I think they just found it like this, to be honest. And the reason why I think that is because I came across this gazette from 1859 so just four years after this hotel supposedly was constructed and they're showing this hotel the stork family and commercial hotel they're showing it as two stories and there's no mention of the streets being raised so i think they found this structure like this and uh, they were just unaware that there was an event which raised the the ground level the grade now moving on to our next location i want to touch upon new orleans once again because in my previous video i touched upon these symbols that can be found scattered throughout new orleans in the iron work the wrought iron the cast iron that can be found throughout new orleans there are these symbols that are referred to as adinkra symbols now we're told they come out of west africa but i don't necessarily believe that narrative but the oral history of these symbols from the original craftsmen seems to have been lost in time, primarily in the 1800s. And what I thought was also interesting upon further research is that just these symbols as a whole, the symbols themselves were rediscovered in the 1800s, in the 19th century. And we're being told they serve as codes, communicating warnings and meanings of proverbs to recipients. So, just the symbols themselves were even rediscovered in the 1800s, let alone the oral histories. So just really, really interesting. And I think that there's a lot more going on with these symbols, but I came across a short clip of somebody talking about these symbols that can be found really throughout a lot of Southern states actually. And I want to play this 30 second clip, but before I do, I just want to mention that New Orleans also, of course, has a lot of archaeology, city beneath the city, and that's a pattern with a lot of sites that have sort of this lost heritage. There seems to always be an earlier colonial period that's buried, and so I just wanted to point that out. So now let me play this short clip. You know, we grew up as kids seeing this and a lot of the ironworks around Savannah, uh, a lot of the ironworks around Charleston, South Carolina, and this is an indinkra symbol. This is an indinkra symbol. This is an indinkra symbol. Matter of fact, every one of these are indinkra symbols. But being around this as a little boy or people just seeing things like that, we never knew what the meanings were. We never knew that it was even an indinkra symbol. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. I liked how growing up he wasn't aware of what these symbols were, what their meaning was. 
And he mentions several different locations as far as where this iron work with these symbols can be found. He mentioned Savannah and he also mentioned Charleston. And I did a little more digging into the iron work of Charleston in the 1800s as well. And once again, when you start looking into the craftsmen, the individuals who crafted this built environment, however, are an underrepresented part of the city's story. So there's a ton of beautiful wrought iron, cast iron, but there's this murky history and a lot of it stems from the 1800s. So I kind of wanted to just point that out. And once again, Charleston, right, it's got this historical aspect to it, but it also has an earlier colonial period that is now buried. And it was once a walled city, we're told anyway, but you can find portions of some of these fortifications and walls significantly buried. I think this portion of this wall is like eight and a half feet. But again, it's this buried component. And I think this could be the result of a major event as opposed to the various narratives we're given. And just one more point about Charleston, a lot of historic structures, including the old jail. I wanted to just to point out that a lot of structures in the 1800s, as far as what we're told, a lot of them were using a type of cement referred to as natural cement. And this is just saying Charleston, the city jail, natural cement over brick masonry. But this natural cement was widely used throughout the United States in the 1800s, but people forgot it even existed. Historical restoration experts people doing uh, restoration on these coastal fortifications and people were trying to restore this fort using Portland cement, a different type of cement. People didn't even know this natural cement was being used. They had, they didn't even know it existed actually until like the 2000s. So I just wanted to point that out to something else, a lost technology from the 1800s and similar thing happened in Europe this natural cement was being used for all these structures the facades these cast elements and they had to carry out a couple of projects in 2008 and 2010 i think to recreate the cement so interesting heritage now this last topic i want to touch on are these cannons that have been intentionally buried because i think there's something interesting we can talk about with respect to them so just to get started britain has a lot of these cannons partially buried usually about two-thirds of the cannon is buried and sometimes they can serve as mooring posts and traffic bollards so this is just some examples in london i believe but in canada there's a really only one place that i can think of that has these buried cannons and that's Halifax on the east coast of Canada and there are I think about six that can still be seen in various locations and this is one here on Barrington Street I believe and this is just a zoomed in image of this cannon here and there's an actual location called the historic properties in Halifax once again and you have this partially buried cannon so I think they tell us a lot of these cannons were buried in like 17, late 1790s. But what's interesting to me about these is that these were intentionally buried. So the raising of the streets actually, in this case, I do believe because there is intention behind this. But when did that actually happen? And I'm going somewhere with this, but this is just another, another cannon, which is across the harbor and in Dartmouth. Now, where things get interesting is that this is an overhead of kind of the downtown area of Halifax. And there's one of these forts referred to as the Citadel. But not far from that, there is one of these armories. And the dating of it is, I think, 1898 or so, some, something in the late 1890s. And this armory, a lot of these armories look like castles, but they found something very interesting during renovations in 2011, and they found these massive cannons. I think they found four of these cannons. Now they're saying they weigh 12 tons, but I've heard estimates from like 12 to 15 tons, and they were just buried right next to this armory and I have a clip that's like minute 30 something like that a little over a minute and everybody was caught off guard by it nobody knew they were there and uh, after the clip we're gonna talk about it because I think there's more going on so let me play this clip the Halifax armory has stood as a landmark in the city for 112 years but no one suspected what was hidden underneath 
I've been working in archaeology for 35 years and uh, first cannons and not just one but we end up with uh, four in the excavation. Workers made the discovery about two weeks ago during extensive renovations. Four huge guns buried next to the building's foundation. In the 1860s these guns were state-of-the-art military technology but by the time the armory was being built in the late 1890s they were obsolete. The guns weigh a whopping 15 tons apiece, which might explain why they were lowered into the foundation pit. Passers-by like seeing the muddy military relics back in the light of day. Uh, I think it's fantastic that they found it. I wonder what else is buried around here. The Department of National Defense is wondering too. As things go, whatever discoveries come up, they come up and we deal with. These four specimens are heading to storage while the military decides where to put them for the next hundred years. Jack Julian, CBC News, Halifax. Okay, yeah, interesting. This whole notion of these massive 12 to 15 ton cannons and they're just lying buried. And even though we're told this was built in 1895, and again, I'm not questioning the ability of people to build structures like this, but I'm, I'm not necessarily believing it though. Just because something could be built doesn't mean it was built at that time. But I'm wondering if this structure was actually already here and they just dumped these cannons and then basically raised the street levels around a structure that was already there to hide the history, potentially. I came across this graphic just showing this front entrance here is represented here in this graphic. And they're just showing you, you know, some of these windows that are in this graphic below grade. But the foundation, I would assume, is actually further down from these windows and I'm going somewhere with this, but I took a snapshot of the video. When they were excavating these cannons, and I should mention that this is roughly the area where these cannons were found, so it's somewhere down here. These cannons, again, 12 to 15 tons were dumped here. They seem to be very close to where the bottom of this window is. So the foundation is further down. That's my assumption, anyway. It seems like the foundation doesn't start until, you know, further down. And these cannons seem to be pretty much at the level of the wind, the bottom part of these windows. So I guess I'm just wondering if the structure is a bit older than they're saying. They were disposing of these cannons and actually just buried them and just raised the street levels around this structure, actually, in an attempt to sort of hide these cannons. Maybe, you know, and I should mention that Halifax is full of these tunnels and there is this early colonial period that's buried as well. During a, a project here at Cogswell Interchange, they found all these buried aspects that they're chalking up to bury British history. But it's this, uh, it's this early colonial period that's buried and then you have these more historic sites and that pattern is continued. So I just wanted to mention that and thought it was really interesting. And some of these cannons are associated with these ironclads, these warships that were more popular during like the Civil War period. Interesting, this whole aspect of these cannons and the raising of the street levels potentially to a structure that was already there, maybe. So I just wanted to point that out. So I think that's about all I got for you today. I just wanted to touch on these few sites, point out some patterns. So what I, what I will do at this point is just give a big shout out to all my patrons. Thanks once again for all your help and support. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. And until next time, take care.